<laughs> I read um, an article years ago. Maybe it was a book. But I read that, and I would like you to either confirm or refute this information, because I think it might be wrong. But he said that when the earth erupted, fountains of the deep opened up and geysers spewed into the air, that it would have thrown big, big rocks, big, big chunks of, of um, material up into the atmosphere that would have left the gravitational pull of the earth and that it's possible that that struck the moon. Oh, is that okay? Let's true let's answer false? that and let's make that the final question of the day. So we'll have 30 minutes for them to see everything. All right, that's a very good question. Walter T. Brown, graduate of MIT, uh, former head of Binet Laboratory, uh, the Air Force. Were you Air Force? Yes. The Air Force official uh, detonation or projectile lab. Binet Lab, Syracuse, New York. Walter T. Brown, graduate of MIT, ran calculations to show that the velocity, that the energy sufficient to rip the Earth into channel, uh, into divisions, and generate the 46,000 mile long mid-oceanic trench between the continents. You're still with me. The energy needed to do that, that's the longest mountain range on Earth, and it's subsea. It, it's, uh, it's not terrestrial. It's the terrascape. OK. The energy required for that would shoot a jet of water over 20 miles high a jet of water. It would also shoot at the beyond the 17,000 escape velocity, Earth escape velocity rate. It would shoot smaller magmatic materials, not huge chunks. So therefore, it is possible, possible that earth rocks, this is very important, earth rocks with algae, with microscopic life, could actually be projected into space, could land on Mars, or could orbit in space for a while, come back to Earth as a small asteroid, and thus generate the speculation that life has originated in outer space and has come back to Earth. Now that's a very dramatic way to conclude this afternoon. Not the huge boulders but a jet of water enough to rip the canopy above the earth and to extend uh, chunks of material that became small asteroids to literally help deface the moon. The defacing of the moon could conceivably, much of it, could conceivably have come from the ejection that started the fountains of the great deep. Well, that reminds me of <clears throat> what the scripture says, that God would give them over to the lie, let okay. them believe what they want to believe. To justify whatever they want. Mm -hmm. Now, the scripture does say, Psalm 46, 2 Samuel 22, and Psalm 18, and Psalm 70, for those taking notes, I'm so glad to see you taking notes. In Psalm 70, their description is a description. It is a flood passage that a great sound, a great noise went out into the heavens. So all of this fits together. Uh, the equivalent of Krakatoa 
the volcanic eruption of Krakatoa, what, 1886 or 7? When? 1883. Good, Ed. That's why I keep friends around. 1883. The, the sound from Krakatoa literally extended around the globe. And uh, the result of Krakatoa in New York, the light, street lights went on mid-afternoon because it got so dark. That's one volcanic eruption. You imagine volcanic eruptions around the world, 47, 46,000 miles long, and the effect and the noise going out in the heavens. So this would parallel that. That noise was recorded around the world from that one volcanic eruption. So yes, there could be scars on the moon, but will that be admitted? Uh, no, at face value, it equates. That's a possi I'm not saying that occurred, but it's a possibility. But Psalm 70, it was 77. I think it's Psalm 77. Check me out there. It'll give you a chance to read your Bible a little more. I think it's Psalm 77. Psalm 77, the noise went out. The sound went out into the heavens. So with that sound would be the potential for the eruption of material. And boats felt the debris from Krakatoa 2,000 miles away, saw the debris coming back, 2,000, and that's just one volcano. So if that's true, if you reach the 17,000 mile velocity, escape velocity for NASA, it's what you've got to do with the rockets to get out of orbit.